Hey everyone, I'm back with another EverQuest video. The new TLP announcement has me super excited and I can't stop thinking about EQ. I've been messing around on Oakland lately, trying to decide which classes I want to play, how many boxes I want to have, what I want my group composition to be, and I've even debated skipping boxes altogether for server launches and focusing on one class to level in a static group so I can get to raiding faster. These are all hard decisions, but I still have like a month and a half to mull it over and decide what to do. But that's not what today's video is about. Today I want to talk about something that I really wasn't sure I wanted to bring up. I've been debating back and forth in my head for about a week whether or not I want to make a video about this ever since the new TLP server was announced and it was confirmed that it would have mischief loot rules. But in the end, I figured I would make the video anyways, so today I would like to share my favorite Chrono slash Platinum farm from Classic Era EverQuest. So why am I hesitant to share this farm, you might ask? Well, on Mischief Server, no one ever went to this spot, and I had it to myself for a long time, and I made quite a few chrono off of it. I had it to myself consistently enough that I would just log out at the safe spot at the camp, go to work, and then come back and still have it to myself when I got home. I'd do the same thing when I went to sleep at night. I'd really only have to leave to go sell when my characters were all full on the lore items that dropped there. I'm worried that if I share my secret, I might also have to share my spot when Teak comes out at the end of May. But I'm going to share it anyways. Mostly because I put some thought into it and realized that Kunark being unlocked at server release might change the dynamic of the camp a bit, making it less valuable, and partly because, let's be honest, how many people are even going to watch this video? The camp is the Minotaur Elder slash Raster Camp in Lower Guck. You can start doing this camp easily enough early to mid-30s with a good box group or a group of real people if you're into that sort of thing. As you level and start killing faster, you'll be able to expand your pulls out and add the Minotaur Patriarch to your kill list at the camp as well for an extra shot at loot. There are three big items that can drop here that sell. The first item is the Guise of the Deceiver that normally drops from the Ghoul Assassin. That camp is almost always taken, and my experience on Mischief 1.0 the mask drops just as often from the Minotaur Elder as it does from the actual camp. This item is usually in high demand early game, as the Guise version allows anyone to click the illusion from their bag, not just Rogue and Bard, and it's a limited time drop that gets phased out with the release of Kunark. Kunark. Yeah. Teak is starting with Kunark unlocked, so does that mean there will be no pre-nerf Guise of the Deceiver on the Teak server? It might. I've seen the question asked, but I have not seen an answer. I kind of hope they leave the item in for at least the first month, because it's a really fun item to have if you like looking like a Dark Elf, which I do, or if you like making money off of people who like looking like a Dark Elf, which I also do. But what if it isn't in the game? Is this camp dead? No, no it isn't. Because there's another solid item that can drop from the Elder. The Ring of the Ancients. Aside from not being a terrible int item, the Ring of the Ancients is an essential part of the J-Boots quest, an item that pretty much everybody wants to have for various reasons that I won't get into, and quite frankly, you should already know. It does seem to be a fairly common drop, so it gets pretty saturated after a while and loses value, but early on when everyone's in a rush, it sells well. So is that it then? If there's no Guise of the Seaver, then this great camp is just a J-Boots farm that will taper off in value pretty fast? Well, no. You may remember early in the video I said that there were three valuable items that drop at this camp, and the third is from Raster himself. He's on a bit of a long timer, but if you're here anyways, you should kill Raster every time he pops, and on Mischief Rules server, it is tradable. The Mischief server also had Raster spawning far more often than he has in past servers, so you won't be going all day waiting for him to spawn. It is a bottleneck item for the Monk Epic, and Monk is a wildly popular class on every TLP server, and every Monk needs to get their Epic, so these sell for quite a while. The Idol was also left off the shared loot tables on Mischief, so that meant that Raster was the only place to get the drop, so demand for the Idol remained high for a long time. It also means that he'll never drop loot from other mobs in his range, so you will always get the Idol and a torn brown shirt. Keep the shirt if you like, but it's worthless. It confused me so much that I wasn't constantly fighting monks and chrono farmers, at least for the idol on Mischief. I was just left alone to farm it and sell it in East Commons for a hefty price. 
I mentioned the Minotaur Patriarch earlier as well. He's one level lower than the Elder and shares a very similar loot table, although not identical. He spawns a little farther into the Minotaur Maze and then paths around the maze so you won't always find him or his placeholder at the spot shown on the Brule maps. There's also a bonus mob at this camp, but it's a pretty low value target unless you want some bags. Uh, that's the Evil Eye. He spawns a short distance from the camp, but for whatever reason he was left off of shared loot tables, and only drops his original loot. At least that was the case on Mischief. I guess there's a chance that they tweaked some of this stuff going into this year's TLP, but I find it very hard to believe that Daybreak would assign resources to realigning the level 35 shared loot table. They must have more important things to do. But anyway, the Evil Eye will only drop his bag and sometimes a bundle of optic nerves that is used for, I think, one of the warrior quest item pieces that no one really does and probably isn't even worth doing. The bags do sell, but demand for bags is pretty low on TLP servers with the marketplace bags being fairly cheap and huge in comparison. The items I talked about are, of course, just the main items from this camp. There is a long list of other drops you can potentially get here because of how many named mobs there are in this level range. A lot of those items will also sell if you work at it, or can be great for gearing out your own characters. Well, thanks for watching my video, and don't forget, this camp is a secret. It's just between us. Please don't tell anyone. I don't want a bunch of players trying to make bank at my secret old world chrono farm. Talk to you next time.